Hello, welcome to York Street. We hope that this sermon will be an inspiring and impactful one, just what you need at this time. For any of our sermon-based studies, please head to our website at www.yorkstreet.com.au. So grab a cuppa, grab your notebook, whatever you need, and we hope that you enjoy the sermon. What do you hope for this Christmas? What are you hoping Christmas looks like this year? Uh, some of us might be hoping for a good feed. Um, Pavlova's always great. Uh, what about maybe hope for you know, some gifts? Maybe you're hopeful that you bought the right gift for somebody else. You're not quite sure if it's going to be well received. Maybe you're hoping for harmony around the, the dinner table with that quirky cousin that always visits at Christmas time and does that weird thing they always do that just sets everyone off. <laughs> Maybe you're looking forward to that Christmas afternoon sleep that seems to go really well on a, a full tummy or maybe just the Boxing Day Christmas match. You wonder what you're, you're hopeful for this Christmas. Hope's a, a bit of a strange thing, isn't it? When we, we, when you, the more you think about the word hope, the more you realise it's quite a an action-orientated word. I am hopeful that I'll be able to walk normally once again. It's, it's something that I hope for. Now, I can put my hope in the work of the incredible medical staff and the physios and the surgeons and the doctors and nurses that worked on my foot, but that can only be tested with an action. I can say, yep, I put my hope in you. They go, okay, take a step. I'm like, no. Nah. Don't want to. It might hurt. It probably will. You've got to take a step. Nah. I'm comfortable in my boot. Kind of. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but, you know, but it's safe and I know it. But if I'm going to put my hope into practice, there's got to be a step. There's got to be an action. Now, while I put my hope in what the work that's done, the hope in that moment has to be in the moment. I step in faith. I put my hope in what's been done and I hope that it holds and I step out in faith. I am hopeful for the future, but the only way I get to the future is by taking steps along the way. You see, the idea of hope has an element of trust, has an element of risk, has an element of of faith, an element of, of, um, of the unknown. So when we look at Christmas and we think of hope, we know that our hope is found in Jesus. We can trust him. We put our faith in him. We, we know that, that we put our hope in him. We know that, that when we, we risk and we take a step out, we know that he's going to be there. But with hope, there's an action. Today we start a new series called The Birth of Hope. And I wonder what action represents your understanding of putting hope in Jesus. What does the action look like? For me, it's to take a physical step for my leg. But for you, what is the spiritual step to show that you have hope in Jesus? But more than that, there are people that we know and love that don't know the hope of the world. How are we sharing the hope for humanity with those that we care and love for? That is, in essence, what this season, uh, this series, this season is all about. What does the action look like and how are we sharing this good news with others? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we have found hope in you. We thank you that we can trust you, Jesus. We thank you that we can depend on you. We thank you that we put our faith in you. Lord, reveal to us through this series what that looks like in action. But Lord, also, give us opportunities to share that hope with those that we love and care for. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as I look, this is is the, the congregation for it. As I look out, I see that there's been some babies born, you know, in and around 
You're not the baby, but you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 good. Um, yeah, in and through the life of the church. Now, now, so you don't have to cast your minds back that far to remember what it was like when you found out you were pregnant or you know somebody that's pregnant and, or maybe you've got grandchildren or whatever. And, and that moment when they start to share the news that they're going to have a baby. They haven't had the baby yet, but they're going to have a baby. And, and there's ultrasounds. There's, there's excitement, there's phone calls, there's conversations. Everyone's all excited. Nowadays, you can get 3D scans of that cute little... <laughs> it's beautiful, amazing. You know, it looks like a squished monkey, but it's amazing. It's the most beautiful baby. <laughs> Always beautiful. You, know? but, but, you, know, you can get all sorts of different photos. Then they do... Um, I can't remember the, the name for it, but it's like the reveal. Is it a boy or a girl? Gender reveal... And there's these parties now where the party organisers talk to the hospital staff somehow and work out if it's a boy or a girl, and even the parents don't always know, and you turn up to this party and and all these balloons pop and streamers go and they're either blue or pink, and everyone's like, yeah, it's a boy or a girl. You cut the cake and whatever colour the cake is, you know, like... It's really a, a quite a discriminatory um, sort of business for those that are colour blind, but, but at the same time, it, it's it's one of those things that they... It's a thing nowadays. We didn't have that growing up, but yeah, baby showers, all this for a child that hasn't even been born. The anticipation, the excitement, the hope of what is yet to come. In Scripture, we see that the, the Old Testament, people were foretelling before Jesus was born, foretelling what would take place and saying, this is what we're excited for. There is something that's going to take place. A baby's going to be born. We're going to put our hope in this child. There is a time that's coming that's going to be so exciting. They called it the kingdom age. And this time's coming where it's going to be so good. And they, they lived for it. They put it into action. They, they put their hope, their, their desires, their lifestyle heading towards this time. We, we read in um, the prophets So many of the prophets spoke of this time that was coming when people would have their hope fulfilled and Jesus' promises would come true. Isaiah chapter 2 says that there's this this time, it says these words, that there will be, they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4. Incredible time of peace and harmony when tools that were used to destroy would be used to create and tools that were used to take would be used to give. Those words are carved in stone at the front of the UN building in the US of USA. And it's what they put their hope in. They put their hope in this time where there will be peace. But you and I know that our hope is not found in a time. Our hope is found in a person. And that is in Jesus Christ. This kingdom age is coming. We know that Jesus came the first time to forgive the world of its sins. But we also read in scripture that there will be a second coming. And in that time there will be peace for all humankind. So we can put our hope in him, in Jesus today for the salvation of our sins, but we can also put our faith and hope in Jesus for tomorrow, for this time of peace that will reign forevermore. But we've got to make sure that we've told our friends and family about that time as well as this time. So the job's done, but it's not finished. And the job's done, we have salvation, but it's not finished because we need to share that with others. You see, we read of this incredible hope, and and while we know that it's Jesus, sometimes we forget what that means. Who is Jesus? And we can actually look at who Jesus is by looking at what people foretold Jesus would be. Make sense? We're talking about hope and time, and it's a little bit like, whoo, where are we? It's a little bit um, time machine, past, present, and future. God actually says, I am who I am, Yahweh, Aki Yahweh, found in Exodus. And those words mean I am the God of the past, I am the God of the present, and I am the God of the future. I have been, I am, and I always will. God transcends time, and we see this pattern throughout Scripture. 
in that we see that, that the Old Testament prophets are, for, are saying what Jesus is going to be like. And they say this in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. We're going to pull out of that one single verse four character traits of the actions of Jesus. The way that, that Jesus showed that he was the hope by the way that he lived. Firstly, we see that Jesus was the wonderful counselor. Now, what is a counselor? A counselor is somebody that deeply cares about the things that you're going through and journeys through them with you, that offers some help or insight to help you through either a time of trouble or a big decision. And we see Jesus in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. He walks into a town and he said his heart is broken. His heart is so moved because he sees the people there and it says they are like sheep without a shepherd. And he cares for the people as individuals because they're lost. And he empathizes with them. We see Jesus when Lazarus dies. He is with his friends that he knows well, yet he knows Lazarus will, will live again. So he knows the miracle will happen. He knows Lazarus is going to raise from the dead and walk out of the, the tomb three days after he's died. But yet as he looks at his friends, the counsellor, the wonderful counsellor, is so full of compassion for the people that he loves that Jesus weeps. This is somebody that wants to have a relationship with you that wants to journey with you, that cares about what you're going through, that offers counsel, the wonderful counsellor that we get to have a personal relationship with because he endured what he endured. He, he went through the emotions that we go through. He understands what we're going through because he stepped into earth to live a human life, to experience those. Jesus is the wonderful counsellor. But he's also... A mighty God. Sometimes we can get a bit hung up on Jesus, warm and fuzzy, he's my friend, and we forget that he is the mighty God. Yes, he cares. Yes, he weeps. Yes, he wants that relationship, but he is a powerful God. The old covenant said that for our relationship with God to be restored, there needed to be a sacrifice. There needed to be death. It should have been us, but we could substitute our death with the death of an animal. Old covenant. New covenant says, well, Jesus came and he died on the cross to restore the relationship between humanity and God. Death in our place. Jesus walks the earth and he speaks. And the relationship is mended. He doesn't even need to touch he is a mighty God. John chapter 5 verse 8 says Jesus is in this room and he's chatting to these people and all of a sudden the roof all goes crazy and falls in, a little bit like the corridor when it leaks here. But um, that would be the spot. If you wanted to do that here, that is the spot. Um, the leak's filled, uh, fixed, but the roof's still mouldy. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> Where am I up to? Yep. So through the roof... This, this man comes down who has this crippling disability and he can't walk. Old covenant, new covenant, Jesus stands in the middle and says, your sins are forgiven. With his words, he forgives the broken relationship. With just his words, there is so much power in what he says. That the relationship is mended and the wrongdoings that somebody has done that deserves death are granted life through what he speaks. That's not enough for some people. And they're like, who is this guy? He goes, well, okay. Stand up, pick up your bed and walk. And in front of all the skeptics, this man is healed. There is power in the voice of Jesus. He is, he is not just the, the loving counsellor, but he is the, the mighty God. And sometimes we forget that, that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are three in one, and the same words that forgive sins are the same words that spoke creation into be, being when there was nothing. He said, let there be light. And we get to have a relationship with the God that spoke the world into being, the God that forgives sins, the God that heals the sick. He wants a relationship with us. He is... 
the loving counsellor. He is the mighty God. But he's also the everlasting father. For some of us, we've had incredible father figures. For some of us, we haven't. Maybe when we think of father, it's, it's not a pleasant memory. And I want to be sensitive to that. But I want you to picture what a loving, good father would look like. And even the, the best fathers with the best intentions will fail because they're human. When they're on their A game, they're brilliant. But they get tired. I remember the first time when my dad hurt himself. I couldn't believe it because dad was bulletproof. Now he's proven that he's not because I think he's had everything replaced. Everything's under warranty now in my father, which is great. <laughs> two shoulders, two hips, back, everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apple doesn't fall farther. Far, anyway. Um, <laughs> But I remember it was a shock to me as a young kid that my dad could be injured because he's your dad. You see, our humanity means that nothing lasts forever. We get old. That's part of life. But picture a loving father that never gets old, that never gets injured, that, that never lets you down, that is always dependable, always there, always on their A game. He's the everlasting father. Like a loving father has compassion on their sons. There's no limits to God's love for us. And we know that because he showed that through the hope that is found in Jesus. And the final action that we see rather than, like on top of this compassion, and this wanting for a relationship to care for others, this incredible power that we have access to so we don't have to do life alone, this, this everlastingness that is God the Father, we also see that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And don't we need that right now? We need peace. Yeah, there are so many broken stories that we hear of people within our church and within our, our country and within the world at the moment that we need peace. And, and the beauty of, of Scripture is, is that everything Jesus said is right. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. It's like, oh. Well, he's right, because <laughs> everything he said is right. He said, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. I said, when we focus on Jesus, there's peace. There's no dysfunction. There's no fracture. There's no nothing that's, that doesn't fit when we look at Jesus. If we focus on him, we find peace. If we hang on to him, we find peace. If we're, if we're wrestling with a decision and we look to him, we'll find peace. So when we talk about the birth of hope, I hope you're getting a glimpse of who Jesus is. The counselor. The power, the everlasting, the peace, the birth of hope is something that is just as much for today as it was foretold and what it will be into the future. Isaiah says, once again, we'll read that passage, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. And verse 7, for the greatness of his governance... And the peace there will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. You see, there is hope in the birth of Jesus and there is hope in the second coming. But we have a job to do between now and then. And that's to make sure that others understand the hope that we hold in Christ. But to take this step, this action to trust God requires us to do something. On Wednesday, I am... Um, I get this boot off, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what they're going to do. Good. I hope. I hope. 
<laughs> that's going to be the case. Uh, when I went in a couple of weeks ago to, to, take, to get the screw taken out, there were a number of vital questions I had. First one was, is it Milwaukee or DeWilt? What power tools do you use and are they fully charged? Um, I don't want nothing running out halfway through. Like, um, their answer was, we use a screwdriver. Sweet. <laughs> I'm learning. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, the other question I had for them, how's lo how lo once I'm out, how long is the procedure going to take? And, um, and when I came out of recovery, they said, well, obviously we do all the tests and get you all stabilised and knock you out and all that sort of stuff. And then the actual procedure took about four minutes. Man, that is like, whew, that is efficient. Man, it takes me long to make a coffee. Anyway, picture this. On Wednesday, I go in and they do what they need to do and, and take off the boot. And I put, up, put on my sneaker and they go, we want you to take a step. There's an action I need to do. There's fear in that step. It might hurt. Probably will. There's anxiety around that. I put my hope in their work, but, but I'm faced with a choice. I can keep the boot on and keep limping. It's safe, it's comfortable-ish. And I could continue through the rest of my life like that. Or I can put an action to my hope and take a step. Take a risk. The only way that I hope to walk normally again is to do some action steps. I believe for some of us, in our spiritual journey, we may be afraid to take the step in our faith because it might hurt. It might be uncomfortable. It might feel unsafe. And because of that, we choose to limp spiritually through life. Where I believe that God has called us spiritually to run and to jump and to thrive. That's what God wants for us. To take steps in our faith, to put our hope in Him, knowing that He was trustworthy before and He'll be trustworthy again. To, to, take, to put our hope in him saying, I know who you are, God. I, I put my hope in you in this decision. I put my hope in you in this step. I put my hope in you as I speak to my neighbor. I put my hope in you as I wrestle through this decision. And put our faith into practice as we step out. I wonder what stands in the way of believing in this hope, firstly. What stands in the way? For my foot, it's, it's the, the fear of pain. Maybe in our spiritual journey, it's the fear of pain. Maybe it's the fear of something that you've grown up knowing might have been wrong. We heard about that in our mission spot. Somebody said something that somebody believed, and it was a lie. And they've had to break through that. And there was pain in that. But because of that, God was able to do amazing things. What does it look, what's standing in the way? First, we've got to name it before we can step through it. The second one, hope requires an action. How do you demonstrate hope in the way that you live? You see, the Old Testament's full of these stories, these parables of people foretelling of what hope looks like and they live towards that hope. We know that that hope is found in Jesus. How are we living for the hope that is found in him? But as the parables also told others of the hope that was to come, how are we telling others of the hope that is found in Christ? What does that look like? At Christmas, we celebrate the birth of hope. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the one who deeply cares for us, the one whose voice brings healing and life, the one whose voice forgives sins, the one whose voice spoke the world into creation, the one that is everlasting and for all time. 
and the one that brings peace. That is a hope worth standing on. That is a hope worth trusting. That is a hope worth running towards. Let's celebrate the birth of hope this year. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that nothing would stand between us and hope, that any fears and anxieties that may be blocking us from stepping out in our spiritual walk, Lord, that we would be able to name, and in naming, we'd be able to break through. God, we pray that as we we think of those people that we deeply love and care for, our friends, families, those that we love, Lord, that we would be able to share hope with them. And in sharing hope with them, we would be able to see them come to an understanding of the one, the one who is the counsel, the one who has the power, the one that is everlasting and the one that brings peace, so that they may live towards the hope that is found in Christ also. Lord, we pray also that this year, that if there is an area of our life that has been spoken to, maybe we need peace, Lord, that we would be able to find that in you once again. As we set our eyes on you, may that translate into actions. Lord, I pray, and I'm sensing this morning that there are some that are limping spiritually at the moment. Lord, I want to pray in the name of Jesus that you would bring healing to the soul. Healing to that spiritual element. Lord, that your spirit would would communicate what needs to be done. Lord, also pray for the, the individuals that may be wrestling with that, that um, they would have a boldness to know that they don't do this alone. To say, I need some help. Will you pray for me? Will you journey with me? Lord, and I pray in that, that there'll be a celebration because we know that there is power in your name. We know that there's an everlasting God that deeply cares about those individuals and that you want them to to run spiritually. Lord, I pray that you would break fear. You would would defeat the words that have been spoken in the past that are untrue. And Lord, that we can hang on to hope. And Lord, hope would drive our decisions. That hope would would drive the, the next step in our life. Hope would drive the motivations for the way that we live. Hope would drive the way that we see others and opportunities. We thank you for giving us hope. We thank you for giving us Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching this message. We hope that it was inspiring and powerful and just what you needed at this moment. If you would like prayer or to find our sermon-based studies, please head to our website or check the description below for a link. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to share the video, like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for updates of when we release new videos. Remember, life can be tough, so let's do it together.